So Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. A uh, very warm welcome to today's edition of Daily Wisdom. Let me share my screen and we will get started with today's session. And today's session is going to be slightly different because we have Hanuman Jayanti today, right? So we will have a special session on Hanumanji today. We have a hard stop at 10 today, right? As of now, yes. Let me see. Okay. Let's get started with our opening prayers like we always do. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwarha, Guru Sakshat Par Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha. Vasudev Sutam Devam Kamsachanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru Okay, so Radhe Radhe Good morning, good evening to all of you. Very warm welcome to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. So let's get started. So first of all, I wanted to wish everybody a very happy Anuman Jayanti. And that is uh, what we are going to talk about Anumanji in today's session. Let me... Pick up... The shloka that I have picked up. So I've gone to 18.56. I'm going to recite it. We'll take three hands and then I'll tell you why I have picked up the shloka. Okay. Machitta sarva durgani Matprasadata rishyasi Atha chetvam ahankara Nashroshyasi Vinakshasi. Okay, let's take three hands. Now, Sandhya, we often do, we go back and forth. And today, I have, we have gone really forward in Bhagavad Gita. And you'll you'll see why I picked up this shloka today. Because we're going to have a special discussion. Yes, Sandhya, go ahead. We'll take three hands. Radhe Radhe. Machitaha Sarva Durgani. मत प्रसादात रिश्यसि अथ चेत्वं अहंकारान न श्रोस्चसि विनक्षसि Very nice, thank you. And yeah, let's take two more hands. Niji, Radhe Radhe. Inishi. Machita sarv durgani mat prasadat rishyasi Atha chetas mahakaran naso sasyasi vinasyasi Radhe 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 Riyaji, please, last but not the least. I can't, yeah. Radhe 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 Machita sarva dhurgani Mat Prasadata Rishyasi Atta Chetvam Ahankara Nashroshyasi Vinakshyasi. Very nice, Radhe thank Radhe. you, Radhe Radhe. So, this shloka, see, we are on 5.15 right now. I picked up this shloka because today is Hanuman Jayanti, and we are going to talk a lot about Lord Hanuman today. And Lord Hanuman, because he's Ishtadev is Lord Ram, right? We know that his name comes along with Lord Ram, right? And uh, in this particular shirka, God, God is saying, if you always remember me, by my grace, you should overcome all obstacles and difficulties. And we'll talk about Lord Hanuman because he was doing Ram Kaj, the seva of God, and he would, his mind would always stay absorbed in Lord Ram. How he was able to navigate through all the obstacles and difficulties along the way when he was going to, you know, in Sundarkand and Ramayana, which is dedicated to Hanumanji Seva, 
where he's able to navigate through all that. And then he goes on to say, but if due to pride, you do not listen to my advice, you will perish. And we'll also pick up some instances where Harumanji was instrumental in breaking pride of a lot of um, lot of people, right? well-known and famous people, I must say that. Okay. All right, so let's get started. Happy Hanuman Jayanti once again to all of you. And uh, Hanumanji is the epitome of Dasse Bhav, right? the different bhavs that we have spoken about in Bhagavad Gita, uh, as our scriptures tell us that when we worship God, one aspect of God is his almighty, almighty power, right? His um, magnificent form, as you can say, where you you bring in the Ashwara Chintan of God. But devotee says, okay, let's leave that aspect aside. Because when we think about that, it's like how big God is and how insignificant I am. So our scriptures tell us that instead of thinking of God as a magnificent identity, much beyond your reach, it's better to build that personal connect with him. And that's where the Brajaras, right? The Rasik saints tell you that when you worship God, when you have, when you can simulate that proximity to God in your head, starting with Dasse Bhav. Dasse Bhav means you, you have access to God. Right? It's like even in material world, a servant has access to your room, right? They, they keep, so that that person can discharge the duty towards his master. So it starts with Dasse Bhav. Then it, you know, the higher Bhav is called the Sakha Bhav, where you can consider God as your friend. And the higher than that is Vatsalya Bhav. And then higher than that is Madhurya Bhav. And the, to begin with, even below Dasse Bhav is called Shant Bhav, where you are thinking of God as a king, subject-object relationship, where there's a, uh, there's a formality, era of formality, and you cannot just meet king just like that. So Dasya Bhav is where you have already started building a connect with God. And Hanumanji is the epitome of Dasya Bhav. The seva that he discharged to Lord Ram during his avatar kal, it was a perfect, how a perfect servant would discharge that duty. Right? And in fact, Lord Ram said that you know, oh Hanuman to, in fact, in he said that in, um, he tells Hanuman that oh, Hanuman to release myself from the debt of one service you performed to me, I shall have to offer my life to you. For all other devotional services done by you, I shall remain eternally indebted. Okay, that is the parikashtha epitome or the perfection of Dasya Bhav that Hanuman ji exhibited during that avatar kal. So let's talk a little bit more about it. So let's see a quick video from Swamiji and then we will talk more about the aspect. So let me stop share and share again because I have to share sound also, which I guess I forgot sharing for the first time. Are you able to see again? Let me play it. We can see it in live. Okay, let me play it. And Shankar ji has got 11 forms and yeah. the highest Rudra is Hanuman. So it is said that he loves this Ram Katha so much. Wherever the Ram Katha begins, Hanuman ji, you know, often an asan is placed for him. But he doesn't even need an asan. He comes in any form that he wishes and he does the raspan of this Ram Kathamrit. There is a story once in Mumbai's commercial area called Madhubag. At the end of the Katha, you know, they say Katha Visarjan Hota Hai Sunahu Veer Hanuman. The Katha is ending, Hanuman Ji, now you can depart. So at the end of this Katha, on the third day, the Katha Vachak, he offered Stuti to the Asan of Hanuman. An advocate got up from the audience and he said, what is this jokery you do on this asan? How do you know that there's Hanuman sitting? So Pandit ji said, all right, I will answer your question tomorrow. All night long, he prayed to Hanuman. Next day, he again placed the asan and he did the afwan. Hanuman ji, please come and reside. 
He then asked the advocate present. The advocate got up. He said, come, lift the asana. So it's a true katha. He tried his best, but he was unable to move the asana. He admitted his defeat and offered pranam. There is an instance you all have heard that once Mother Sita was giving gifts to everyone. Hanuman was wondering, what is she going to give to me? She took a mala and gave it to him. Hanuman took one of the beads and he cracked it. His mouth and he threw it. Then he took another bead, cracked it with his mouth and threw it. So somebody said, why are you disrespecting the mala that Sita has given? Hanuman said, I am checking if the image of my Ram is in this bead. If it is not there, what use is it to me? So then they questioned Hanuman that, all right, do you have a Ram in Sita in your heart? If you don't, then what use is it? At that time, Hanuman tore his heart apart and there he showed the images of Sita and Ram in Stal. Anumanji in his huge form, he stood on a hill to jump off. Now he pressed that hill with so much of force that it got squashed. Jehi giri pair, dehi hanumanta, chale usada, patal turanta. And he took off. Now he is going on Ram Gaj. So obstacles came of different kinds. From the earth, from the water, from the sky. The first of all, there was a golden mountain that arose from the ocean. This was Mena Parvat. So the mountain said to Hanumanji that you are going so far, you must be getting tired. Come and relax on me and then after that you can continue. Anumanji, he said in Ram Gaj, where is the relaxation? I will do my work and then afterwards I will relax. Nevertheless, to show respect to the mountain, he touched it and continued. Now, Surasa came, a Sarpini, a female snake. She raised her hood big into the air and said, I am exceedingly hungry. You seem to be very tasty. I shall eat you for my lunch. So Hanumanji said, that's all right. Do one thing. Let me finish and my work and then I will come back and I will myself fall into your mouth. Surasa said that I am a snake. When I feel hungry, I eat my own eggs. You think I'm going to leave you like this? So Hanuman said, all right, then eat me. Hanumanji increased his body to one yojan size. So now Surasa was obliged to open her mouth to an equal size. Like when you eat Pani Puri, you have to open your mouth wide. So Surasa made it one yojan, Hanumanji increased to two yojan. Surasa made it two yojan, Hanumanji increased to four. So four to 16, 16 to 32, 32 to 64. So when she increased 64, Jasa Surasa, Badana Badhava, Tasu Duguna Kapi Rupa Dikhava. At 64 yojan, suddenly Hanumanji became small. He entered her mouth and he said, all right, I have fulfilled your wish. I entered your mouth. I am leaving now. So in front of the first obstacle, 
Anuman ji showed humbleness. In front of the second obstacle, he used his intellect. You see, all kinds of obstacles will come when you do bhakti. So you have to handle them in accordance with their nature. Now he went further ahead and there was a demoness called Sinica. So Sinica used to eat the birds by catching, pinning their shadow. And those poor birds would be forced to come and she would eat. So she grabbed Hanumanji's shadow while he was flying. Now Hanumanji said, here's the next obstacle. This time he gave her a box and knocked her out. Sometimes you need to use force where people will not listen to intellect, etc. So he continued and he crossed the hundred yojan ocean and landed in Lanka. Now he made his form normal and he looked over the wall into Ravan's Lanka. He saw a golden city full of opulence. Soldiers are patrolling in different places, the demon soldiers. Lots of beautiful women, lots of places for enjoyment. So Hanuman saw that there's a wall around and four gates. He decided that the best time to enter will be night time. So at night he made his form even smaller mm -hmm. and he was making his entrance when guarding that entrance was a Rakshasi called Lankini. So Lankani said, Hey, Chor! Anumanji thought, the biggest thief is inside. I'm going for Ram Kaj and she's calling me thief. So he boxed her and Lankani fell flat. Now she should have got annoyed, she should have got frightened, but she came and offered her pranam to Hanuman. She said, the words of Brahma Ji have come true. When Ravan got hold of this Nagari, at that time I was fed up with him. So Brahma Ji told me, do not worry. When a monkey reaches here and knocks you out, you can understand that the end of Lanka is near. So I offer my respects to Ram's Sevak. Hanumanji went into the city. He walked around. Since it was night time, the Rakshasas, Rakshasis were sleeping. He also entered the room of Ravan. He was also sleeping with his ten heads. So Hanumanji was inspecting the city. And in one place, in one house, he saw outside Tulsi was growing. Hanumanji said, in this city of demons, how come there's Tulsi growing? So while he was contemplating it, Vibhishan woke up and he started chanting the name of Ram as was his habit. Ram, 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 Ram. Hanumanji was more astonished. So they started speaking. Hanuman said that you are a devotee of Ram. How come, how do you manage to stay in this city like this? So the dialogue ensued. Vibhishan said, I am a devotee. I have been taking Ram, 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 Ram. But I have not received Ram's grace. What is the reason for that? Hanuman said, you did not receive grace because you were taking the Ram Nam, but you were not doing the Ram Kaj. When Ravan kidnapped Mother Sita and brought her here, knowing that it is wrong, why did you not object? So Vibhishan promised that henceforth, he will definitely do the Ram Kaj. And if there is a wrong, he will speak up. Vibhishan said that today I know 
that Ram's grace has fallen upon me. Ab mohi bha bharosa hanumanta vinu hari kripa milahi nahi santa. Without the grace of Ram, I would not have met a saint like you. So Hanumanji then from there he proceeded. It had become morning time. So he reached this garden. He jumped up on the tree. And Sita, when he saw her, she was in a very pitiable condition. She was thin and lean and sad in separation from Ram. And she was practically not eating anything. So Hanumanji thought, how should I reveal myself? So he took the mudrika that Ram had given and threw it in front of her. Now when she received the mudrika, she immediately recognized. She said, where did this come from? Who has thrown it here? So Hanumanji, he started relating Ram Katha Prasangs. Relating the Ram Leela. This is Hanumanji's style. He often does this. He starts relating the Ram Leela. So Hanumanji sitting on the tree top started relating. In one way, some people said he started the parampara that the Katha Vachak should sit on top. So Sita was able to hear, she said, such sweet words. They are so pleasing to my ear like music. Who is this? Please reveal yourself. Anumanji jumped down and he said, Ma, I am Ram Dut Anuman. I am Ram Das. So Sita did not look at him. She said, how do I believe that you are? He said, I am telling you. Sita said, even Ravan said the same thing. And then he kidnapped me. So Hanumanji said, Ma, I take a vow at the lotus feet of Kripa Nidhan, our Prabhu Ram, that I am his sevak. So when Hanumanji took the name Kripa Nidhan, at that time Sita Ji realized because she was the only one who used to address him by that name, Karuna Nidhan. So when Hanumanji said Karuna Nidhan, Sita Ji understood. So Hanumanji assured her that my Prabhu has sent me with the message that do not worry, he is going to come and get you. Hanumanji said, I have the power that I can put you on my back and I can take you across. But that will not be appropriate. So Sita Ji said, you have that much of power, but you are a small monkey. So when Sita Ji said like that, Hanuman Ji increased his body and became huge. Sita Ji was pleased. She blessed him. Ashta Siddhi Navanidhi Ke Data. So she blessed him to have the Ashta Siddhis and the Navanidhis. Hanuman Ji became small again. So Hanuman Ji said, Mother, do not worry. I shall go back, give the message to him. He will bring the army and he shall conquer Ravan and liberate you from here. Right. So, Lord, this is a beautiful story. Uh, coming back to Hanuman Jayanti and the shloka that we have see Hanumanji. In this, like in the shloka, Lord is very clearly saying that by my grace, you shall overcome all the obstacles and difficulties. And how do you overcome? He gives you the wisdom and the, the things that are needed to overcome those, right? If you look at Hanumanji, when it came to that mountain, he was very respectful when it came to Surasa. You know, one of the lessons that, you know, you can take out from that story is that when she was increasing her mouth, he was increasing his size. So basically, you have to be greater than the difficulty. 
you know, more persistent and the difficulty. And then, of course, he used it intellect. And then he boxed a few people along the way. Lankini, he could have done that right at the word go, right? Because Anumanji is fairly powerful. You know, when as a child, he is the first Rudra, the most powerful Rudra of Lord Shiva. He has 11 Rudras and he is the first one of them. And even as a child, he had amazing powers. One day he woke up in the morning and he was feeling hungry and he saw that, uh, you know, orange sun just coming out of the horizon. And then he thought it's some kind of a fruit and he tried to grab it and, you know, eat it. And Indra got freaked out. You know, what kind of power this small baby has. And then he wielded his Vajra on him, which made him unconscious. And when Vayudev came to know, he's Pavan Putra, right? He came to know that this is what Indra has done. Vayudev withdrew his energy from earth. And then people started feeling miserable. And then he, Indra had to apologize. Shiv came and revived Hanumanji and Indra to make up, to make amends for what he had done. He said, okay, I give you a boon that your body is going to be more stronger than the Vajra him itself. And then other celestial gods also gave him powers that nothing of the five fire, the five elements that we have, the fire, earth could, you know, water could, uh, could be invincible or could conquer him. And then he got a lot of, collected a lot of boons. He, he collected that Ashta Siddhi Navnikatata from Mother Sita, but he was collecting boons even earlier, right? So the still gods have given him boons, had given him boons, which would enable him to travel anywhere, stay healthy, um, make his form big or small, or, or be Chiranjeevi. In fact, Hanumanji is Chiranjeevi. Uh, he's alive even now. And it is said like, Swamiji so beautifully explained that he is present in all the Ram Kathas. There's a there's a separate place that is kept for him in every Ram Katha. So this power that comes, it is enabled by God, right? His grace, he said, you can overcome all obstacles. Even when Angad went as a peace messenger, he did a mini swamvar of himself. You know, when he planted his foot and said, okay, if anybody can lift it, then Mother Sita is yours. Now, can you believe anybody giving the, you know this kind of a commitment? What is the power that is enabling him? He had firm faith that Lord Ram is with me. And he he was so confident about that thing that nobody is going to win that swimmer. And the moment he you know, put his fist down on the palace, you know, the, the mukuts, those crowns that uh, people uh, in that courtroom were wearing, they flew out. And one of the crowns actually flew like a UFO and fell out to Lord Ram's feet that was Ravan's crown but then he challenged that if anybody would do that okay there will be no war and mother Sita is yours and nobody could do that so that power where did that power and that resolve and that confident confidence come that is enabled by God himself okay so that is a key thing now let's move on and get into a few more um, learn, learn a few more things about Lord Hanuman I'm sure you would have come across those stories so if Mahabharat in Bhagavad Gita, by the way, Kapidhwaj, if you know, you see this chariot. In this chariot, Hanumanji is sitting as well. So he was seated on top of that chariot, which Arjun used throughout the battle. So that's when he was fighting Karan. When he was fighting Karan, you know, the chariot was shaking, maybe moving a few inches here and there. And when he was shooting an arrow back to Karan, his chariot was going a few feet away. But Lord Krishna was applauding the Karan's effort more than Arjun's effort. Arjun was like, why? I mean, I'm moving his chariot more than he's moving mine. Why are you so impressed with this guy? He said, you know what? First of all, I am seated on your chariot. Secondly, you've got Hanuman, great Hanuman, seated right on top of that. And still he's able to move your chariot. That is much more uh, commendable than what you are able to achieve. And in fact, it is said when the war was over, he said that, uh, he told Arjun, don't, you know, let uh, you first get off. And Arjun got off and then Hanumanji got off and then Krishna got off. And the moment he got off, the chariot tore down to ashes. Okay, it was burnt to ashes because the chariot was already dismantled. It was only with Krishna's power and Hanuman's power that it was intact throughout the battle. Okay, so Kapidhwaj, Hanumanji was present there as well. Now, let me tell you a few stories of pride, how Hanumanji broke pride of some of the famous personalities you would have heard about okay so first it was mr bhim so bhim was there he was very proud of his this thing in fact bhim you know how much power did he have if he would throw an elephant it would go out of the orbit of earth 
acquire centripetal energy and keep rotating like a satellite now don't laugh on that okay this is something that vishen pai was telling had told to janmeje as well and janmeje started laughing he didn't believe it truly happened okay that much energy he had where the elephants would keep rotating like uh, satellites and vishen pai raised his hand and one of the elephant came down on the ground with a thud so this bheem had a lot of pride of his energy and hanuman ji he was lying down you know with his tail wrong then hanum this guy bheem says you know move your tail aside so hanuman ji said why don't you move it yourself he said don't you know who i am so he had a lot of pride he said who are you he said i am the great bheem you know you don't have you heard how much power i do i have and you are an old man can't you move aside he said if you have so much of power why don't you lift it and move it aside all by yourself and bheem could not until hanuman ji gave him darshan and then finally he was like okay sorry about that then hanuman ji did not stop there then what happens so hanuman ji what happened was dwarka dhish krishna said can you call on hanuman i want to meet him so garud garud who is narayan sir he came to hanuman ji and he said dwarka dwarka dhish is summoning you he wants to meet you so hanuman ji said who is dwarka dhish i don't know any dwarka dhish i only know ayodhya dhish okay so get lost he told him that so he was like what happened and he said i know the only the one who holds the hanushman you go we know right his ishtadev is although he knows that but hanuman ji also had a motive to enact that leela so garud goes back and tells krishna that he said i don't know who is dwarka dhish he said okay tell him is ayodhya dhish is calling him okay the one with hanushman sita when he comes back again and tells hanuman okay your ayodhya dhish is calling you he said really my ram is calling me where he said he is there in mathura at that or dwarka there so he said sure i'll come and meet him so garud said why don't you sit on me i'll take you in a jiffy right because garud can fly really fast hanuman ji said i told you i can go there i'll reach there he said no 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 come you are old you know i can take you pretty quickly hanuman ji boxed him like he boxed sri lankini and garud fell in the ocean and why while, while he was flapping his wings and you know drying himself up so that he can go back and relay the news back to krishna hanuman ji had already reached there and when he reached there sudarshan chakra came he also had a pride right that i am the gatekeeper and he said uh, who are you and he said i have to meet you know uh, my lord ram here and he said no if he asked it asking me a question hanuman said i don't have time to waste it to came and put him in his mouth okay and then just walked inside so when he walked inside there krishna had gotten ready he he had gotten rid of his crown and all that he came in a ram form anyway the only thing that separates krishna and ram is a peacock feather or ganeshman right so he picked up that and then there was satyabhama there he said you could get into that attire of sita okay hanuman ji hanuman ji is coming to have our darshan and satyabhama was very proud of her beauty that i'm i'm the most beautiful queen of krishna here so nevertheless hanuman ji goes there she was pride of so he broke the pride of bhim and then garud and then sudarshan chakra so krishna um, and then satyabhama was sitting standing right next to him and then he said what's going on with your mouth you know and then he opens his mouth and sudarshan chakra just flies away he said okay i need to save my life first and then it flies away and then he says he you know pays his obeisance to krishna which is in a ram form and then she is also standing and then he says father who is this maid servant you have kept long with your servant right so so that's how you broke satyabhama's pride as well so that is what hanuman ji thought all these some bit of tidbits of stories that i have heard which i found pretty fascinating so sudarshan chakra and all these this happen but nevertheless if we have to learn some lessons he broke their pride as well and he's chiranjeevi he exists and i have heard even a yodhya temple some people claim that they have seen hanuman ji there i don't know how far it is true but might be true right it, it, it was a historic event and there's a good reason hanuman ji was present there uh, he is not going to disclose himself uh, but then um, he is chiranjeevi and he is supposed to exist until the end of kali yuga that's how it is so the lessons from um, hanuman ji if we have to learn practical lessons uh, from that sense unflinching devotion to lord ram he had an unflinching we see he opened up his heart and showed lord ram there in fact when they were lord ram had gone to lanka and he was camping outside lanka before the battle ensued one of the evenings they were just having you know we have a bonfire and do the party they were doing some party with all the people and just you know uh, sharing musings about the moon that they were seeing on the sky 
So everybody was saying, what is this black spot in moon? So everybody was telling, okay, what they think that black spot is. Somebody was saying, okay, it's it's the poison, you know, when the Samudra Manthan happened, somebody gave some other reason, some other. And then Hanumanji stern came. He said, you know what? What I can see in that moon is that my Ram Bhagwan is also Savala. He is also seated within that. So that was his level of devotion. He would see Sia, Sia Ram Sabjagjani. He would see Sita and Ram everywhere. So he had an unflinching devotion. In fact, as a story goes that when they were trying to build the uh, bridge with boulders, the boulders were sinking. So then un until he started write, writing Ra and Ma on both of them and they would come together and not sink at that point. So uh, he would pretty much relate everything to God and uh, even with Mother Sita, there's a story that goes, right? He asked her, why do you put this Sindur? And she said, it's pleasing to uh, Lord Ram. He said, really? And then he poured everything, all the Sindur, entire body. That is why if you see Hanumanji, uh, you see him in orange color because he poured Sindur so that uh, he becomes even more pleasing to his Ishtadev. And what people do is put Sikka's coin there. I don't know why they do that. And I don't know why Hanumanji gets most requests from bachelors to get married, even though he's himself an eternal bachelor. Okay, so... Uh, but for some reason it happens anyways so now exclusive focus on the goal so when the mountain offered itself for rest he said no i have some ram kaj to do so rest can wait right so he was very focused on the job at hand so this is a management lesson as well right from that overcoming obstacles with this discerning intelligence right how he tackled uh, shirsa and sihika he will not pick up battle just for the sake of it. He was very optimized even lankini he, he could have boxed all of them in one shot but he said okay let me not waste my energy wait for the night and then take on a slower slow you know small form and then peacefully get inside he did not waste his energy just like that he had a compassionate diplomacy towards vibhishan as well right um, he's trying to understand who you are and why how you can attain draw on god's grace lord ram's grace because he said that Although you take Ram's Nam, but when you do Ram Kaj, then that will enable you to draw grace. And he said, why don't you make me meet my spiritual mother and then I will make you meet my spiritual father. Yeah, because we both have the same spiritual father and mother. Attitude of servitude, we know, right? I mean, when even when Lakshman uh, was uh, lying unconscious, he pretty much picked up the entire mountain and, and came there. And, and uh, we know that how he... Um, he like he's the parikashtha or the epitome or the perfection of service right. attitude towards god right um, and in fact one of the sevas when it came to when they all came back to yodhya after the battle was over so there was some discussion going on about the sevas of god right so ram uh, ram's charan everybody wants to do that seva so lakshman and sita got even feet each and everybody split the seva uh, amongst themselves until um, there was nothing remaining and Hanumanji said what seva is there and then I think the seva that he took was that whenever Ram would yawn he'll do chutki so he said that's the best seva because now he can only focus on his face all the times that turned out to be the best seva and that's the seva he took upon himself so his uh, attitude of seva and love for God, Ram it was unparalleled humbleness, diplomacy, courage we've already seen that and discrimination regarding when to use shakti that is very very important he was very very optimized he will not show his strength just for the sake of it and even though he could have taken sita all alone through his own power he said no that will not be um, appropriate um, or you know for a sevak to take on the job of his own because i would let ram take that honor as opposed to doing it myself he could have killed ram and pretty much could have accomplished anything at all right so with that, we celebrate. Uh, happy birthday to Harumanji. Um, I'm sure there was a cake cutting that happened in the temple as well. I couldn't make it. So happy birthday to Harumanji. Anything related to Harumanji or anything inspirational that you find you want to share, please go ahead. I've shared some tidbits that I knew about. Okay, we have... All right, we do have time. I covered it fairly quickly today. Yeah, we have Kumarji. Kumarji. Jai Shri Ram, Kumarji. Sure, it's you'll be very, you'll be ecstatic today. Uh, it's your Hanumanji's birthday, so yes, please go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> Jai Shri Ram, Jai Hanuman. Uh, yeah, we all know that uh, Hanumanji is uh, Shrinjivi, and uh, what, what, what else you know would be better than you know 
getting to meet him in this lifetime. That would be the greatest thing of all. You know, it's equivalent to meeting Ram, I would say. So um, you carry, you just covered almost everything, Nitinji. Uh, I am sure you did your homework and all that stuff. So I had all these things, and then I just ticked off everything that you said. Just one thing, which of course you partially uh, talked about. What happens is uh, during the coronation, Patabishe, uh, when Ram goes back, um, Sita is giving out gifts for everyone. Right, everyone who helped, and even you know, everyone else, and then she gives a, um, a pearl beads uh, a mala, a necklace okay, okay, mala okay. to Hanuman, and mm -hmm. Hanuman immediately starts biting on that each pearl and then spitting it out, and people are so aghast. I'm like, first thing, it's a very, um, it's a pearl necklace, which again, even in those days, probably. It was considered big, but who is giving it? Ma, the world's mother is giving it, and he's doing this. They were so aghast. And then, um, you know, uh, Ra, I don't know who Rama or Sita asks him, or someone else asks him, why are you doing it? He says, I'm just trying to see if Ram is here. If Ram is not in this, it is useless for me. And uh, I think the quote, people in the court uh, get upset and I'm like, you know, you, you're you thinking too much of yourself, you know. Uh, do you have Ram in you, right? And that's when he splits his okay. chest and shows uh, Ram in there, you know, what a great sight it would have been, you know, uh, to see it in <laughs> real. But even if we imagine it is such, such, so powerful. So powerful was Lord Hanuman and so powerful was his love for Lord Ram. And, you know, you just cannot separate them. And uh, as I have always said, you know, like uh, Rama is searching for his wife, even though he's God, he has to play that part. He's searching for his wife. He's, um, you know, hugging all the trees and saying, where is my Sita? Where is my Sita? Right. And and in a moment, this, uh, uh, this uh, scene comes where Hanuman goes and meets him. He disguises himself as a Brahmin and, you know, um, talks to him, but then both can see through each other because they are so, so powerful. They are already enlightened and all that stuff, right? And from that, then on starts Sundarkand, right? That's and right. Sundarkand is so, so beautiful, uh, so, so holy, and, you know, it's so effective. Uh, people say when you have problems in the family, to read Sundarkand, Parayan, right? Do Parayan of Sundarkand, you know, and... Um, once again, uh, you know, I don't want to miss saying this, Hanuman Chalisa by um, my other mother, Emma Subalakshmi. When she sings it, I get goosebumps every time. And she says, uh, you know, no demon, nothing will, no, nothing will, no fear will come near you when yes. you think of Lord Hanuman. Thank you, so, Gomaji. Yeah, yes. thank you so much. Jai Shri Ram. Your uh, you know, emotions are pretty palpable when you talk about Hanumanji. And that's, and there's a reason I put some orange color here on the slide as well, because he's orange, right? Uh, but yes, uh, one of the biggest advantages of reciting Hanuman Chalisa is that, you know, Bhuta Pishacha Nikat Nahi Aave. That's my favorite line. So I use, I didn't know much of it, but at least I would, I would always remember that whenever I would pass through the dark um, when I was young. But yes, Hanumanji's, uh, like like I said, it's the you know the the first of the eleven rudras. It's like Shiva and Shavatar only. And uh, when we talk about in devotion, das ke das ke das, right? When we do devotion to Hanumanji, that is so pleasing to God as well, right? And even in the Parikashtha of Dasya Bhav, the master forgets that he's a master, and the das forgets he's a das, right? It all starts merging because so Hanumanji would sit on top of Ram's head and all that can happen as well when you reach the peak of Dasya Bhav as well. And in fact, Swamiji, in one of his SMX, I remember, he said that the, the peak of Dasya Bhav is Prem. You know, when you fructify, it's not that. And then the peak of Prem, the Madhurya Bhav, is the Saichari Bhav. So that was kind of very uh, profound statement for me. It's still, still not sunk into me to understand the, prof the true depth of it but that's what he had said so i was like okay 
anyways let's take some more hands yes monica ji uh, with a cup of coffee or chai you can explain uh, about water uh, <laughs> okay no, jonathan ji that, that water okay yeah. radhe radhe everybody uh, i i wanted to kind of remind and reiterate and many people wouldn't know also the story also about uh, hanuman gadi temple i'm not sure if you know we have heard of it but i'm pretty sure that uh, you would love to hear it again so this is the true incident that happened in 1998 where uh, some ayodhya being ayodhya and uh, you know a place of faith there were few terrorists who planted uh, bombs uh, in temples hanuman gadi temple is known uh, is very famous because hanuman ji was blessed and was uh, sort of asked by uh, ram ji to protect ayodhya at hanuman gadi which is why it is it is very famous so one of the they so the, the inspector's name was uh, i think avinash if i'm not wrong and there's a web series also on it um so when they got the lead and when they found out they were able to defuse and find and defuse few bombs but the last bomb they just couldn't trace it it was placed in hanuman gadi temple uh, behind a water filter and when they found it they obviously they rushed towards the uh, uh, th that place Uh, but then they they couldn't locate where it is just before they reached it just 3 seconds prior 3 seconds prior they saw a monkey pulling out those wires and cutting it biting it how would a monkey know what which wire to bite i mean it's 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 very normal it's pretty normal in ayodhya you know these kind of miracles but this was something that uh, you know people who don't have faith or you know who are always in doubt they were taken aback that this just cannot be a coincidence right this gave me goosebumps and i i saw that uh, series also on on television but then i thought i'll i'll just bring this up thank you for bringing that yeah those kind of things do happen and then we think it was one of those things but if you think deeply about it of course you know a monkey tearing apart wires that if even if one connection goes wrong it will be a massive blast right and doing it to perfection Yeah, and yeah. Hanuman ji gave them enough time, Manatin ji. <laughs> just three seconds prior, when he knew that okay, now I think I'll have to intervene, he did it, and then he just quietly climbed on top of Hanuman Gadi Temple like he always does, and sat there. So, Jai Shri Ram, Jai Hanuman. Yeah, thank you for narrating that story. Jai Shri Ram, Jai Hanuman. Yes, Aparna ji. Raje, Raje, Manatin ji, and everyone, Happy Hanuman Jai Hindi. um i was going to share the same story that uh, kumar ji said oh, you know i was just learned at 9 o'clock yeah when um, hanuman ji appears up on his chest and shows uh, uh, you know uh, ram and uh, ram and sita ji um the other thing i had was uh, it's a little question um what is the relation with like what is it with the uh, betel leaves why do people offer betel leaves to hanuman ji that was my question betel leaves i think there is something related to it shiv bhakts can talk about it right um monica ji is saying yes yes she is going to explain that to you and he is rudranj so maybe that's why betel leaves are offered to him as well if somebody knows the story about betel bel patra i think there is a story i had known uh, why it is favorite to lord shiva but if you remember it please narrate it uh, that was out of syllabus for me so i didn't revise it today <laughs> thank so, you for the saffron story um, that uh, i didn't know that yeah my pleasure um we'll come back to that beetle leaf story uh, pratusha we'll go and then let's take quick. quite a few people have raised their hands today and please fill out the feedback tracker if you have any more question or want to discuss because we have a hard stop at 10 today so maybe a minute each to all of you and feedback tracker please also fill it out yes pratusha go ahead and radhe radhe everyone happy hanuman jayanti actually i wanted to uh, Say a very personal uh, thing about Lord uh, Hanuman. Like uh, there has been a incident in like a period in my life where I was not praying to any god. So that included uh, a time period where I was wanting a child and I was not having. So one day my mother-in-law came to me all of a sudden. I was not even lighting a lamp. So she said that I will ask you something. Will you do it? So I said yes. I didn't even say ask what. And she asked me to chant Hanuman Chalisa, and I had to learn it from the starting. And um, uh, I was at that time I was in uh, India. I went back to US and I started chanting. I learned it first of all. I was chanting like eight nine times in a day just to 
learn it. And after exactly 100 days, I got my positive pregnancy. So they say, Josh shat ke baad paati kar goi, shat me thandre times. Chute hi bandhi maha sik hoi. Jo yaha pade haan manshal ka, hoi siddhi saati gari sa. Like God, Lord, God is Parvati is Sakshi. She's saying that you will get what you want. So that was a very powerful personal uh, sure. thing uh, which yeah. made me spiritual. <laughs> And oh, yeah. uh, probably a faith that worked uh, because <laughs> it's a journey of faith and it can do miracles, right? And when it says even a faith, and I was not, sir, I was not even praying. I was like, I was not. I just left everything, and then just because my mother-in-law said I was praying, and it, 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 so that's good. Thank you for narrating that story. I mean, these you. kind of things reinforce our faith. Okay, a minute each. Quite a few hands are there. So if you can limit it to a minute or so, that will be good. So that way we can cover everybody. And in the meantime, please fill out the feedback tracker as well. Yes, Sandhya, go ahead. Yes, Radhe Radhe. I mean, thank you for sharing these stories. And, you know, in addition to the Dasse Bhav aspect, I also feel this surrender. Uh, he's, he's like the greatest example of how one should surrender to God. And mm -hmm. this uh, Chutki story that you said, uh, that there was there is this bhajan that I had heard during my childhood. Ki tere prabhu jante hai baat ghat ghat ki bajaye jatu pyare hanuman chutki. So that is a very like bhot pyara bhajan hai. And like last thing, uh, like I also imagine him to be one of the cutest devotees of Lord Ram. Like his, he, unki jitne bhi leelas hoti thi, they used to be really really uh, cute as well as part as a surrendered child of uh, Lord Ram. So there was one Leela in which uh, Sita Mata had invited him uh, for uh, offering food in the in her kitchen. She kept on making food. He kept on eating all delicacies. Uh, it was just not enough. And then she ended up asking Lord Ram, how can I satiate uh, your Bhakt Hanuman? And then Lord Ram said that on a leaf, uh, Tulsi leaf, I think if you write Ram uh, and give that to him, he will be satiated. And that's what exactly that had happened. So that was also nice. Good story. Yeah. Thank you. Today I'm really learning a lot of things about Lord Animal. Mm -hmm. So that's the best way to celebrate his birthday. Yes, Vinodji, real quick. Still have eight minutes. Vinodji, you always play with Hanumanji's yeah. name in Kahoot. So please go ahead. We'd love to hear from you. Meenuji has given you the permission. Now you can go ahead. 2011, we had the option to go and visit our relatives in Mumbai mm -hmm. or go and attend the Chitra Kurshivar with Swamiji. So we did that and all those Leelas were there. That's wonderful. I'll be brief. There's uh, Hanuman, uh, what is that word? Uh, the mountain, the Hanumanji was uh, feeling very hot and he, and Sita, he said, what do you want? And he asked for the fountain, I think water. I'm not sure about the story. Anyways, there were 400 steps up the mountain and Minuji wanted no part of it, but she made it up all the way. <laughs> and then at the top of the mountain, there's Hanumanji's mandir. And guess what? I was given prashad, laddus by, uh, by Pandaji. And as soon as I took those, a monkey comes and grabs those uh, couple of laddus from my hand. And I'm not kidding you that the monkey was there for almost five minutes, giving us time to take a video and pictures. I will show that to you sometime. So this is the Kripa of Hanuman. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Shri Ram. Jai Thank you very much for... I remember when I went to Vrindavan last trip, there's so many monkeys there. So one of the best things was when there was an auto person, it was a sight to behold. I mean, if I cannot, of course, uh, articulate it because it, you just had to be there to experience that, you know, the funniness around it. So this guy's topi was taken by a monkey. So when his topi was taken, so this, and these days, those monkeys, they are loving fruities there in Vrindavan. Okay. There's a fashion that they pick up. So these days it's a fruity. So 
immediately the moment he put his topi he grabbed a fruity from the nearby shop without even buying it he grabbed the fruity he kept it in front of him and the monkey he just looked at him he gave him the fruity in one hand grabbed the topi and grabbed the fruity also and monkey was very upset that he lost both of them and gave the fruity back and he said okay let's go it was like okay it happens every day but if you had seen those two minutes it was like two good but yeah anyways monkeys um, uh, something valuable with you these days they are going after mobiles because they have figured out in vrindavan that mobile is something everybody has in hand so they will grab that and you offer them fruity and they'll trade it with you okay they have figured it out that game plan but so be prepared with carrying a lot of fruities with you if you want to you know lose something there and it happens i mean I've, i saw that in vrindavan anyways let's take a couple of hands they just go ahead please and then pooja is there and keshav ji is there yeah radhe radhe everyone uh, thank you tin ji for sharing all the stories of hanuman um, like the, the, do anyone of you know what is where is the birth place of hanuman uh, the birth place of hanuman ji uh, yeah it's in a place called kiskinda which is in uh, hampi which is in the state where i'm from karnataka kiskinda nareshwar yeah, so, in bali right Yeah, Kishkinda is in uh, present-day Hampi, so uh, that's where Hanuman Ji was born. Actually, there's a hill called Anjan Anjaneya Adi Hill, oh. and that's why in 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 uh, in Karnataka they call him Anjaneya also as uh, as the name. That's nice. I think yeah. it's a mere coincidence you are in our session today because uh, we have I've met at least the first person who was born at the same place as Hanuman Ji. So. Welcome to the session. Oh, session. I was born in Bangalore, but it's like this. It is the same state. I think maybe it's about six uh, five hundred kilometers away from Bangalore. It's quite, it's quite far. It's in the north part of Karnataka. But Kishkinda was where he was born. Basically. Thank you for sharing. And that. as a yeah, and as a question, does anyone of you know the story of Panchamukhi? Like um, there Panchamukhi. is a, his yeah. I thought like if someone knows the story, I don't know the story. I mean, like I've seen ji, like Panch. Pooja ji knows the story. She said yes. So go ahead, Pooja ji. We have three okay. minutes to finish off the story and and what you want to share. So let's hear from Pooja yeah. as well. Radhe Radhe everyone. Radhe Radhe Nitin Bhaiya. Uh, they just correct me if I'm wrong. Wherever if I you know go wrong. But then for uh, Panchmukhi Avatar, this was one Avatar which Hanuman ji took when Ahi uh, Ravan, Ram uh, Ravan's brother. Uh, he used to stay in Patal Lok. What he does is because he's a so Patal Lok uh, is. Is US only okay? It has become come out now. Okay, it used to be <laughs> okay. So what Ravan does is, is because Ahi Ravan is Mahamaya's biggest devotee. So Ravan tells Ahi Ravan, who is uh, Ravan's younger brother, uh, that you can capture Ram and Lakshman, and uh, you know, it's like bhe chada dena on Mahamaya. So this is what you can do with Ram Lakshman. Uh, so what he does is he captures both of them. takes them to pata lok and hides them uh, so what hanuman ji does is uh, after getting all the uh, uh, you know information from vibhishan he goes to pata lok and it's because everything works reverse in pata lok you know fire it has its fire, what fire does is basically it burns things but in pata lok it starts cooling down things likewise uh, in pata lok gravity would not try to pull things down it will just throw things up for so what hanuman ji does is uh, he takes the panchmukhi avatar and he has you know his each face towards different direction like his garud face would be towards either east side or hanuman face would be towards the front side or probably you know this is how he takes the panchmukhi avatar and he um kills ahi ravan and gets ram and lakshman back thank you pooja for narrating that story i think that was the only missing piece today we have run out of time keshav ji i think like we pass on the baton we will pass pass you on to the next session so you can tell us the hanuman story or what you had to share if you want to do it real quick 60 seconds please go ahead jai shri ram jai hanuman very simple thing hamare pur purane time pe naam ka bada meaning hota tha what is the meaning of hanuman like spider man superman we have hanuman <laughs> so hanuman jisne apne maan ka hanan kar diya wo hmm. hanuman और जब उसका मान ही नहीं है 
तो अभिमान नहीं है अभिमान नहीं है तो ईगो नहीं है तो और क्या चाहिए फिर वो मांग नहीं क्या भाई किसी से राधे राधे Thank you so much. I think you just wrapped it up in time, and uh, I think we covered so many things about Hanuman Ji personally. Uh, we've never, you know, spent time so much time on Hanuman Jayanti, but today was. I mean, I learned a lot of new things as well. So thank you again for a fascinating, engaging discussion with each one of you, and especially the ones who turned on their videos. Uh, with that, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Radhe Radhe and happy Hanuman. Radhe Radhe. I don't happy Shri Ram. Jai Hanuman. Please fill out the feedback yeah. packet. राधे राधे वी हैव अजय नेक्स्ट क्लास ऑन सो साईराम जी टू रन द क्लास टुडे ओके ओवर टू यू साईराम जी देन राधे राधे या राधे राधे थैंक यू सो मच अजय विल बी जॉइनिंग अस शॉर्टली राधे राधे able to hear